Hi, this is Cammie Davis. My website is cammiedavis.com, which is C-A-M-M-Y davis.com. Along with my art and wearable jewelry, wearable jewelry, that would be wearable art. <laughs> Along with my wearable art, I also have videos and tutorials. So I'm going to cover a box to keep little, you know, jewelry or whatever in. So what I'm going to do is cover it in newsprint and then paint a flower on it when I'm finished. So when I cover things in newsprint, I actually use magazines. I go to the back of magazines where they have, you know, text that looks similar to newsprint and I use these. It's a cleaner white and the ink doesn't bleed. So I, I've already done that. I went to the back of a few magazines last night and just cut out little pieces in different sizes that I can use. I wanted kind of smaller ones because there's so many angles and stuff on this box. Okay, so I have everything that I need. I have the piece that I'm going to cover with collage. I have using print pieces that I'm going to use as my collage. The paintbrush. I have Mod Podge. I have a little bowl of water. And the reason is when you're um, collaging, if you soak the paper in water just for a few seconds, um, and then I will set it on a towel, which I have here underneath the water, just to get it so it's not so saturated with water. Um, it will it will lay better on your the piece that you're collaging. It won't have all the bubbles and stuff that you can get sometimes with collage. I want to make sure that I collage around the little hinges in the back, so I will probably start my collage here just so I make sure that I've got that done. The other thing I want to be really careful of is not to put any collage on the, these little areas that go together because it will stick together and it will be just kind of a gummy little mess. Even after it's dry, it will still do this little sticky thing. So I'll make sure that my pieces end right here. And then I won't put any collage on the bottom for the same reason that um, it'll get kind of gummy and then if you put it on a dresser, it'll just kind of stick. So I find it's better not to do that. I'm going to take a few of my pieces maybe four or five and just drop them in the water. Make sure they're submerged. Just let them sit there for just a second. It doesn't have to be too long. I'm going to take my little pieces out, lay them on the towel. Then I'm going to start with the hinges. I'm going to go ahead and open this while I'm working on it because I want to make sure that I don't seal anything shut that I wouldn't want sealed shut. <laughs> and I'm going to put the, the Mod Podge right up next to the hinge. And I just do a small area at a time. This does dry fairly quickly. Once you stick it down, you don't want to peel it up. I'm going to put my brush in the water so that it doesn't set up and harden on me and get ruined because I don't want that. And I'm going to find something to prop this up with. Now if you know you're using newsprint, it is kind of fun if you know who you're making it for. It's kind of fun to keep that in mind. So for instance, I thought this would be good for a teenager. So I was using um, the horoscope pages. You don't want, you know, STD or something in the background on something you're giving to grandma or whatever. <laughs> if I was making one for my mom, I would probably do something with roses or flowers. So I might get a, a gardening magazine and pull out stuff from that for my mom. So take into consideration or who you're, who you're making it for. Cause that, would make a difference on who you're cutting stuff out for. You can really personalize it that way. And it's just the background, but I just notice little touches like that just really make the gift and make people feel special. Or wrapping paper is another idea. Or you can look online or even family photos, you know, anything you want. Like if I did one for my mom, I could also include one of her dogs. She would, she would love that. actually, gosh, mom, maybe you might be getting one of those for Christmas. <laughs> Um, if you do, if you choose to print something yourself, what you want to do is is put it on a zip drive or email it, whatever, to Staples or Office Depot or whatever. Have them print it on their printer with their ink versus, unless you have a special printer, um, printing it at home is that theirs doesn't run. So I've been letting this dry for a while and, and I've checked these pieces of paper that I need to trim the ends off of. These are the pieces that are that are a little bit too long. It's really important to wait until they are completely dry or when you're using your X-Acto knife, it's just gonna kind of rip them instead of giving them a nice clean cut. So once this is completely dry, you take your sharp blade and you just rut, run it along the edge. Now, can you hear that? that? means I need a sharp blade. This one is not acceptable. 
So I will be making a trip to Michael's later today and we'll get some more. So this is the what not to do. I'm often a good example of that, actually. <laughs> I do these tutorials and put them online because I love teaching people and helping them be creative, inspiring them to not be afraid to jump in and try anything. So I really enjoy doing these, but I also do try to make a living as an artist. So if you go to my website and see something you like, I do um, framed prints to make them more affordable for my original paintings. But I also do jewelry that's made with images of my artwork, trying to um, come up with affordable ways for, for people who can't afford original paintings. So please keep me in mind for your gift giving, especially to yourself, for your gift giz giving pleasure. And see so yeah, how with the, with the brush I'm just turning over these edges. Some of them you might have to hold it down just for a little bit until they really start sticking. Like this one which doesn't have much to turn over. It's, it's getting a little cranky so I'm just going to hold it down with the brush till it really sticks in there. So now I'm just going to work on finishing the top. A layer of Mod Podge on everything I've done so far. Ooh, look, this little edge is still being cranky. Stay. This one's easier because I left a little bit more paper, so that's something to keep in mind when you're working on your own. And I especially on the top want to make sure it looks nice because this is the part that you're going to typically see. Okay, so I put another coat on my little box. It's completely dry. I think it looks cute. And now I want to paint or you could collage some type of design on top. And I am going to do something simple. I'm going to do a black dandelion is what I decided. The typical idea would be to put you know a little flower up here, but of course I don't really like typical. I'm going to put the center of my dandelion right here and then the spikies will go this way and down here and maybe a little in the front and I think that will uh, graphically really give it some interest. So that is the plan. These dandelions are really easy to make so don't be afraid to try one. When you're doing thin straight lines or signing your name or something these long brushes are really the easiest. When you're painting with acrylics you um, you have to get your brush wet so dip it in water. I always have a towel right by where I'm painting so that I can brush the water off of it but it does have to be wet to start with. So I am I am going to put my center right here. So basically I'm just going to paint long spiky things. When you turn a corner you have to be um, more careful to keep the line straight, so I just try to eye it. Do my spikies at different lengths. And then what I do with dandelions is I just put, put some little, like five little, um, what would they be called? Those little, those little puffy things that <laughs> dandelions have on the end of them. I'm just gonna put little puffy things. So I'll do one row like this, then when I come back, I'll do, do a little bit shorter ones. dry I'm gonna paint my name on the bottom. I'm, all I'm gonna do to finish the dandelion is put some little dots for the inside even though dandelions don't particularly look like that when I painted them I just think it kind of finishes it off and I want to keep it really I like the neutrality of the, the just the black and white I'm gonna use a really light color. Now this is exactly what I wanted. You can hardly see it. Then I'll let it dry for about an hour and then I'm going to paint two coats of Mod Podge on it and before I wrap it, I always let it dry overnight when I'm using Mod Podge or anything sticky like that. I'll let this dry and then wrap it tomorrow and it'll be ready to go for Christmas. Oh my god, I'm ahead of the game this year.